Hello, everyone, and welcome to our opening ceremony. We will begin with a land acknowledgement. This land acknowledgement applies to the land on which the University of Toronto operates. As we are all located in different places, we encourage you to see which land acknowledgement applies to where you currently are and read and reflect on it. This is a small but important step in decolonization and reconciliation. I would like to acknowledge the sacred land on which the University of Toronto operates. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Piton First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and learn in this community on this territory. Uh, thank you, Leah, so much. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to T4 students, family, friends, and U of T Medicine staff and faculty. Thank you for joining us today, wherever you may be, for this year's 2020 U of T Medicine opening ceremony. My name is Calandra, and along with Leah, Evan, Jocelyn, and Camilla, we are Team PRISM, this year's Orientation Week coordinators. We are so glad you are able to join us today to celebrate the amazing accomplishments of our incoming medical students as they begin a new chapter of their lives, one that is sure to be filled with excitement, growth, and success. Traditionally, a stethoscope ceremony event is hosted at the start of Orientation Week where each new student is draped with their stethoscope by a U of T medicine faculty member in the presence of their loved ones. However, as we are not able to congregate together in person at this time, our team has decided to hold an opening ceremony in lieu of stethoscope ceremony, with the hopes that one day we can host this event in person when public health guidelines permit. We know that many students and their loved ones were disappointed to hear this news, but we appreciate your patience and understanding during this difficult time, and we promise we've done everything to make this opening ceremony a special one. Not having a stethoscope ceremony in no way takes away from your incredible achievements, nor does it negate all of the hard work you put in to be where you are today. Remember that our stethoscopes connect us to each other and allow us to listen more clearly and carefully. Now more than ever, we need connection and compassion to support one another through these unprecedented times. We are so excited to begin our opening ceremony, which features two keynote addresses from our Dean of Medicine, Dr. Trevor Young, and our Vice Dean, Dr. Patricia Houston. We will then play a slideshow featuring photos of our new incoming 2T4 class, and next we'll have a recitation of the Foundation's Oath with Dr. Houston, which will be displayed on the screen for you to follow along. You could also grab your physical copy that was given to you in your orientation week package. The event will end with a special surprise for the two T4s. Now, Evan will introduce our first speaker, Dr. Trevor Young. So Professor Trevor Young is Dean of the University of Toronto's Faculty of Medicine and Vice Provost Relations with Healthcare Institutions. Professor Young graduated from the medical school at the University of Manitoba in 1983. He completed his postgraduate training in psychiatry in 1987, and then his PhD at the Institute of Medical Science, U of T in 1995, and was a research fellow at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. He has been professor of psychiatry and behavioral neuroscience at McMaster University, professor and head department of psychiatry at the University of British Columbia, and professor and chair of the department of psychiatry at the University of Toronto. He was also physician in chief executive vice president programs at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto. Professor Young is a clinician scientist who studies the molecular basis of bipolar disorders and its treatment. Since January 1st, 2015, Professor Young has been Dean of Canada's largest faculty of medicine. As vice provost, he is responsible for the university's partnership with nine fully affiliated hospitals and 20 community affiliated hospitals and health facilities. In 2018, the National Taiwan University ranking placed U of T Medicine first in Canada and third in the world in clinical medicine. Please join me in welcoming Professor Dean Young. Good evening, everybody. Earlier today, I had the opportunity to formally welcome the U of T 
MD class of 2024 on behalf of the Faculty of Medicine. In the hours that pass, let me assure you, you are still very welcome here. So I don't want to use my time reiterating the challenges and opportunities that are before our newest students or opine about the pandemic and, or social media, how it's changed the practice of medicine. Instead, I want to return to one theme I discussed this morning and I want to direct my comments to the family and friends of our students who are joining us here tonight. This morning, I put three challenges to our students and the first was, remember what inspired you to apply to medical school and honor those who helped get you here. I explained that it's important to remember what inspired you to study medicine because in difficult days, it will keep you tethered. That's not to suggest that new interests won't emerge. I certainly hope they do. But there was something that inspired each student to want to become a doctor. Whether they had an experience themselves, a family member had in the healthcare system, a desire to help, a desire to change, a desire to discover, it's important that they remember what sparked their interest. And it's important for our students to honor those who have supported them to get here because they are the ones who will support them through their studies. And here is where you, family and friends, come in. Today, your loved one will begin a remarkable journey. And I'm sure you sit there now thinking of all the things that they've already done, and you are absolutely correct. Many of our students have faced challenges. Some are the first in their family to earn a university degree. They were part-time jobs, provided care to family members. Some were older, some were younger. They've all studied long hours and committed themselves not only to academic excellence, but also to service. I suspect without your love and support, it would be difficult for them to reach this point in their career. And I'm sure there were sacrifices that you made to help our new students make it to medical school as well. Let me assure you our admissions process is rigorous and unrelenting in seeking the very best students possible to join U of T Medicine. And we know that we have also admitted outstanding, talented and remarkable students this year to the class of 2024. For everything you have done to help them uh, be such a person, thank you. I am confident that our spectacular medical school, as well as the communities we serve, will be better because of their studies and work here. But today is more, uh, more than a new step uh, along the path they have been, tra been traveling is the start of a transformative journey as they enter the medical profession. It will be difficult, it will be challenging, but it will be incredibly rewarding, inspiring and meaningful. And I think as we see our challenges in the world today, you know how important the work of physicians will be and you will be there serving and helping so many people. Just as you, uh, just as you have been before, I ask you to be there for your loved ones now especially as we deliver learning primarily on time uh, online, your support will be critical. This isn't, your, whoops, uh, this isn't your responsibility alone. Um, this, uh, and we, were, we have a robust team that are here to make sure that you will succeed. This includes our instructors, our faculty leaders, and our staff, and especially the Office of Health Professions Student Affairs, OPSA, with their team of personal and academic counselors and advisors. However, the best support we can deliver can rarely match the love and support family and friends can provide. And is he, is he, uh, so for everything you've already done, thank you. And for everything you will continue to do, thank you again. Now let me return my uh, attention again to the new students for a moment. While your family and friends are supporting you, I want to remind you of your obligations. Namely, honor those who have supported you to get here. That means you return phone calls and emails. That means you make it to meals, even if it's virtually or socially distanced as often as you can. That means you don't forget where you come from and those shoulders that you're standing on. You will honor your family and friends contribution first by recognizing them and expressing thanks and second through your success. And I know each of you will be incredibly successful in your program here. Before I conclude, I want to thank all of our faculty and staff who join us online tonight for your dedication. Over the next four years and years after that, our students will appreciate your commitment to their success. 
I also want to thank members of Team PRISM who are organizing this year's orientation a week. They've done an incredible job under challenging circumstances, and I, I know it's, uh, it will be very meaningful to all of you. And finally, let me say again, welcome and congratulations to the MD class of 2024 and to your family and friends. You all belong here. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your speech, Dean Young. Uh, now I will introduce Dr. Patricia Houston. Dr. Patricia Houston began her term at the University of Toronto as Vice Dean of the MD program in 2016, responsible for leadership of the MD and MD PhD programs. Most recently, Dr. Houston was appointed Vice Dean Medical Education. In her expanded role as Vice Dean Medical Education, Dr. Houston retains responsibility for the MD program with additional oversight of postgraduate medical education and continuing professional development programs. A graduate of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto, where she also completed a master's in education at OISE, Dr. Houston has, a dis has distinguished herself as a collaborative leader in health professional education. She has served in a number of leadership roles, both at the university and at St. Michael's Hospital, where she served as Vice President of Education. She was Vice Chair of Education in the fac Faculty of Medicine Department of Anesthesia from 2004 to 2011, and served as Acting Vice Dean Undergraduate Medical Education in 2012 to 2013. At St. Michael's, she has served as Medical Director, Perioperative Service Program, and Anesthetist-in-Chief, among other roles. Throughout her career, she has been recognized with numerous teaching and leadership awards. She is committed to ensuring excellence and alignment across the educational program she oversees and a learning environment where all belong. So thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. It's a little bit too long, but we want the families to know that I actually have the credentials to lead this medical school and to make sure that your students, your, your loved ones have a program that is excellent. So you students, welcome class of 2T4. Welcome friends, welcome family, welcome to our faculty and staff who are together with us, though not together in physical space, celebrating your first day of medical school. Day one of medical school, you have survived. You only have 1,378 more days to go until you come to the end and your convocation. And, and, and at that event, you will say an oath. And the event we have tonight, you will also say an oath. So both at the beginning and end of medical school, you repeat an oath together that speaks to medicine as a profession. And tonight, it is our responsibility to welcome you to the profession of medicine. The oath will share with you important competencies and values that you need to develop as you embark on this, which is the first stage of your education to becoming a physician and a healthcare provider. Admission to medical school is a significant achievement. You came to this program by competing and graduating at the top of your classes. And I don't need to tell you or your family how hard you had to work to get there to this first stage of the lifelong journey. You entered medical school with many qualities, intelligence, knowledge, curiosity, commitment, persistence, and a wide range of diverse and outstanding accomplishments. And now as a medical student, you must learn how to be a team member, how to be open and ready to work with and support others, how to be a professional, an advocate for your patients and your community, a scholar. You must be kind, compassionate, compassionate and concerned for your patients, your colleagues, your family, your community, and most importantly, always for yourself. At the Faculty of Medicine, we highly value being inclusive, supportive, and culturally sensitive. From a societal perspective, physicians and medical students who are on their way to becoming physicians Occupy, occupy a place of significant privilege. And with privilege comes power. Consideration of how you exercise that privilege in power, including the attitudes and behaviors that it can give rise to in the learning environment, lies at the heart of thinking about, talking about, and acting as a member of the medical profession. There is, of course, a power differential between medical students 
and the faculty and staff that are responsible for their education. Earlier today, I mentioned to you the importance of speaking up if you experience or witness mistreatment in the learning environment. I also told you that we've taken many steps to ensure that you have the support that you need if you are impacted by unprofessional behavior. And later this week, Dr. Rena Patani, our recently appointed Director of Learner Experience, will speak to you about those processes and supports available to any student who has experienced or witnessed behavior they perceive or suspect as being mistreatment. But it's all not bad about a bad learning environment. U of T is an awesome, amazing, excellent educational institution. And we are partnered with awesome, amazing, excellent clinical institutions. And for the most part, what you will be going into is a very positive, enriching, impactful educational experience. The Faculty of Medicine has appointed a Director of Professional Values. And we do this because we understand that professionalism is the flip side of mistreatment. So we want to make sure that not only do we have processes in place to support you should you witness mistreatment, but we also, all of us, every day, support and promote professional values as something that is inseparable from being a physician. Becoming a doctor is not an easy journey. It wasn't an easy journey back when I went through medical school eons ago, and it won't be an easy journey for you either. Although we are there to support you, you're going to have to develop your own network, your own community, and your own sense of resilience. Having resilience means that you have a set of skills that makes it possible for you to get through the difficult times and to thrive during and after them. And I'm not going to suggest that there won't be difficult times because there will be, but having friends and family and a community of support to you is what's going to make you get through that and be stronger for it. Resilience can be learned. It helps you to deal with big and little stresses, and we all have those in our lives. So as Dean Young spoke about, you must always make a priority of taking care of yourself and remembering your friends and family. It's because of them that you're here today. You have to find the time to relax, to have fun, to rest, and to reflect. You will strive for excellence, but you have to understand that no one is perfect. Always remember the importance of asking for help when you need it. Help with your learning, help with taking care of your patients, help for yourself. Hippocrates said, cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. Your patients will give back to you as much or more than you give to them. They will tell you your pro their problems let you into their lives, share their fears and their hopes, and gives you the, give you the privilege of learning from them. You can never say thank you enough. At times in this journey, kindness may appear to be rare in the world, but it always lives in every one of us, and it is free and it is easy to offer. So please remember to treat your patients, your peers, and your colleagues with kindness and always extend it to yourself. You do belong. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words, Dr. Houston. And as students, we definitely want to echo that the staff at this institution are truly in your corner and their doors, whether in person or virtual, are always open. So keep that in mind as you uh, start your journeys here. Uh, now we will be moving on to the photo slideshow of you and your fellow 2T4 classmates. I uh, use this time to reflect on the journey you have taken to arrive at this moment today and also think of the people who got you here today as well. You will hear this many times throughout your medical career, but medicine is a team sport and it's not just the doctors, the nurses and healthcare professionals who are part of your team, but your family, your friends, loved ones and support systems that will enable you to become caring and kind physicians for whatever community you end up serving. The purpose of this slideshow is to celebrate your achievements as well as your privilege as a U of T medical student. It's important to ask yourself, how will you use this privilege and this position to better our communities? How will you address the significant health disparities we see in our communities? 
What will you do? We are all so lucky to be here, and it's important we look beyond the photo you submitted for this PowerPoint and think about every action and person that helped you get to where you are today. Team PRISM is so proud of you guys and is so honored to prepare this event for you and your loved ones. Each photo will be only on the screen for four seconds if you want to take any pictures. The session will also be recorded and made available afterwards. Enjoy the slideshow, and if you're like Dr. Houston, maybe you can find someone that catches your eye. <laughs>
Uh, now we will have uh, Vice Dean Patricia Houston introduce the oath. Oh, I thought it, I was talking away and finally somebody told me to talk. I've been getting all these text messages and completely ignoring them. I'm so sorry. I was about to tell you why we normally call this the stethoscope ceremony instead of the opening ceremony. The reason for it is we normally will drape each student with a stethoscope and it's part of us welcoming you to the profession of medicine. You provide your own stethoscope, but we drape you and it's like you become one of us. We use the stethoscope as our symbol, not a white coat. The white coat is a symbol of power. The stethoscope is a symbol of listening. And what you have to do as you become a doctor is to remember always not to listen just with your ears, but to listen with your heart. This oath was written by students at the, at the MD program at U of T from the class of 1T7 to 2T2, and it is called the Foundation's Medical Student Oath. And so now I would like you all, all of the medical students out there in the audience, to repeat it after me, please. As I embark upon the study of medicine, I pledge to uphold the following with honor and integrity. I promise to engage in lifelong learning throughout the phases of my career and commit to a culture of continuous performance improvement. Be resilient and mindful of my well-being and that of my colleagues. Preserve my own humanity and remember the passions that I have that led me here today. Explore the diversity within my own class and learn from my peers' academic and personal journeys. Appreciate the roles and contributions of students from other health professions will join me to provide integrated team-based care. Place the dignity and autonomy of each patient that I encounter first and foremost in their medical care. Honor the privacy and confidentiality of my patients in all forms of communication. Remember that I too may one day be a patient and treat all patients with kindness, respecting individuals' values and cultures. Lend my knowledge and abilities to improve the health of communities. Recognize my strengths, weaknesses, and when I have reached my personal and professional limits. With this oath, I vow to practice the art and science of medicine with passion and compassion having regard to the interest of my colleagues, my community, myself, and above all, my patients. So I hope you keep a copy of that and look at it every once in a while. I think probably the uh, PRISM team uh, would say that uh, it certainly does help to provide you with a framework of what you're going to do. So here is the surprise. For you, we have Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's here to say a few words to you this evening as you start this momentous journey. Warm greetings to you all. My name is Tony Fauci and I am a physician scientist, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the United States National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, and a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. I am delighted to have this opportunity to congratulate and offer brief remarks to the University of Toronto Medical School class of 2024. As we continue to confront the unprecedented global pandemic of COVID-19 that has upended all our lives, I am keenly aware that beginning your medical education under the constraints of this pandemic is both disappointing and difficult at best. However, we all must adapt to this situation as you have done so well and unite to overcome its many challenges. Now, more than ever, we need your energy, your talent, your character, and your resolve, qualities I am confident you have in abundance. I often advise students to be open to unanticipated opportunities that present themselves. 
The emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic is a rare opportunity from which we are learning an extraordinary amount about the intersection of medical science, public health, and human behavior. No matter how engaged with this public health crisis you become, unquestionably, this pandemic will leave a formative imprint on your lives and careers. The global pandemic of COVID-19 remains a grave situation. I am hopeful that we will soon turn the corner and gain the upper hand, but now is not the time for complacency. We must intensify our efforts, stay vigilant, and realize we currently are in a period of uncertainty. We do not know how the pandemic may further evolve or what its ultimate impact will be, especially as we head into the fall and winter seasons and the return of seasonal influenza. Ultimately, however, we will come out from under the shadow of this pandemic and you will be in the vanguard, learning, caring, innovating, and showing us how. In that regard, we all can take heart that progress is being made on the scientific front. Large scale efficacy trials of several promising COVID-19 vaccine candidates developed in record time are starting to be launched. And although one can never guarantee success with vaccine development, I am cautiously optimistic that we will have a vaccine by early 2021. Clinical trials of multiple different types of treatments, including monoclonal antibodies, convalescent plasma, and hyperimmune globulin may yield results even sooner. Now is the time for all of us to dig deep, double down, and adhere to the simple practices that we know work to protect ourselves and others until we have medical tools proven to safely and effectively prevent and treat this disease. Wash your hands, avoid crowds, wear a face covering and physically distance. And so please stay well and look out for one another. We are all in this together and the only way we will end it is by ending it together. We will eventually put this COVID-19 pandemic behind us and face important new challenges. As you begin down the path to a medical career, I wish you all the very best. Thank you. This marks the end of our event. Thank you so much for attending our opening ceremony and for submitting in your photos. It was so lovely to see all your beautiful, smiling faces. We hope that you enjoyed our event and were able to share this special moment with your family and friends. We'd like to thank our speakers, the ACE team for setting up and managing this MS Live event, and to our student support administrators, Mark and Ike, for their hard work and dedication. Again, congratulations to our new incoming medical students. You did it and we are so proud of you. We hope to see you all soon to celebrate in person one day, but in the meantime, we hope you all keep safe and well. We look forward to seeing all of our 2T4 students tomorrow, bright and early, for our Dean's Breakfast event. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.